As you know, if you watched our live stream on Tuesday night, there is a new mayor who has been elected uh, in Chicago and a quite an interesting race. So we wanted to get someone who was local who could really break down the unique dynamics here. So we're excited to be joined by Frank Calabrese. He is a local Chicago political consultant. Great to have you, Frank. Good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So the general dynamics of this race, as I understand them, is you have Paul uh, Vallis, who was backed by the uh, police union and really ran on this like, you know, law and order, tough on crime type of posture. And then you had Brandon Johnson, who's a middle school teacher and a labor activist who was backed by a coalition of lefties, backed by Bernie Sanders. Um, and he ends up actually prevailing, which is a break from some of the dynamics we've seen in other cities, in particular New York, with the election of uh, Mayor Eric Adams. So just give people a sort of general sense of the race and how Johnson was able to be successful here as a more left-wing candidate? So I would compare this race more to Los Angeles. What happened in Los Angeles is you had a wealthy um, white man uh, who was a former Republican, and then you had a, um, more of a mainstream Democrat, Karen Bass, and Karen Bass won. So the Johnson campaign, they tried to cast Paul Vallis as essentially a Republican. He was supported by Republican donors. Um, he appeared a lot on conservative talk radio. And what the results were is that the more wealthy areas of Chicago, the more socially conservative areas of Chicago where a lot of police and firefighters live, they voted for Paul Vallis in big numbers. But then a lot of the minority areas in Chicago and the more of the liberal activist areas of Chicago, kind of our local version of Williamsburg, um, you know, um, Logan Square and, and Rogers Park, they voted for Brandon Johnson in really big numbers. And Brandon Johnson won. Got it. So, Frank, a lot of people are interpreting this nationally about crime and all. Can you, what are the actual issues that were before people in Chicago? What was Johnson talking about? What was Vallis talking about? Was it all about crime? Teachers? Break it all down for us. So, so crime, according to all the polls, was the number one issue. Okay. However, um, it, it kind of meant different things for different people. So Brandon Johnson, he's a county commissioner. He was supporting defunding the police as a county commissioner. Um, when he ran for mayor, he changed his tone. He said he will not defund the police. Um, and I think this election came down to just um, dynamics of, you know, who do you trust more to handle the crime issue? So Paul Vallis, he kind of ran as a lock him up, throw away the key type of tough on crime. And then, you know, Brandon Johnson ran as more of a holistic kind of, um, you know, your progressive approach to, to treat crime, Got um, you know, look at the root cause of crime. So both campaigns ran on crime, but the more uh, mainstream Democratic progressive ver version of that, which is kind of a more holistic approach to crime, um, that won the day with city of Chicago voters. Hmm. Um, let's take a listen to you. I have a little bit of uh, Brandon Johnson. I believe this is part of his victory speech, just so folks can get a bit of a sense of him. Let's take a listen to that. Make no mistake about it, Chicago is a union town. By investing in what actually works to prevent crime. And that means youth employment, mental health centers, ensuring that law enforcement has the resources to solve and prevent crime. A city that actually respects the workers who keep it running and supports the entrepreneurs that keep it growing. A city where trains run on time and where no one is too poor to live in one of the richest cities, in one of the wealthiest nations at the richest time in the history of the world. A city where public schools have the resources to meet the needs of every child across this city. Now, in other words, tonight is the beginning of a Chicago that truly invests in all of its people. So, Frank, you can really hear the way that he framed his public safety messaging, and it is sounding some sort of classic progressive themes. I know that the numbers I saw, he won something like 80 percent of the black vote in the city. Um, working class black voters are actually an area where progressives have sometimes struggled. Do you see his messaging as being key to putting together this winning coalition? Is this something that you think progressives could look to replicate in other cities? Or are there unique dynamics here in Chicago, which really just have to do with the particulars of these communities and this particular political race? Yeah, I, I, I think you have to look at Chicago. Again, it's a two-person race. Right. And Paul Vallis, um, 
again, he's it's a majority minority city. Um, it's a very liberal city. Um, Chicago is, and Paul Vallis, he had a like a high floor and a low ceiling. Um, you know, he, he essentially was branded as a Republican, and you know, um, he, he had trouble um, hitting fifty percent. It's really crazy because all the polls was having him like at forty eight percent, and that's probably where he's going to finish. Um, he was not able to grow his coalition. So, um, I, I'm not too sure that you know a progressive. Um, in the the brand of Brandon Johnson could win in New York per se, which historically, um, you know, um, votes for more moderate type of mayors. You know, people like Bloomberg and now, um, you know, Eric Adams. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I, I think you have to look at Chicago. You have to look at both the candidates and how Paul Vallis was was kind of a flawed candidate for a big liberal city. Yep. Another question I had for you, Frank, is did abortion politics play here at all? Um, they were obviously quite significant in a Wisconsin state Supreme Court race that we covered um, here at Breaking Points, too. It was really, you know, potentially the determinative factor, factor in the more liberal candidate, just absolutely romping in that race. Um, but I had read that Vallis had made some previous comments uh, that were oppositional to abortion and that Brandon Johnson also used those against him. Do you think that abortion politics played in this at all? Was it a significant factor, even as we understand crime was kind of the main uh, focus. So when it comes to Chicago politics, um, you look at local aldermen, you know, the city council members, we call them aldermen here. They really run on kind of um, bread and butter type issues. You know, they run on um, crime. They run on quality of life. You know, they run on taking the trash out. Um, when people vote for mayor and local officials, I really don't think they they vote on, on abortion politics or, or, or more um, national politics. Um, you know, a, abortion was talked about in this campaign, but it, it wasn't really highlighted um, like you see in like the Wisconsin Supreme Court race, where obviously the Supreme Court Wisconsin, they're going to be dealing with abortion directly. Um, in Chicago, you know, abortion, um, you know, it's, it's going to be as, as safe and accessible, you know, at least in my lifetime. It's, it's a very um, liberal city. So it wasn't as talked yeah. about as much. Got yeah. It. Makes sense. Yeah. Perhaps just used as a way, again, to sort of paint him as like, this guy's not really one of us. He's really a Republican. Um, Frank, tell people where people, uh, where folks can find you on Twitter, because that's where we found you and found your analysis really useful. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, so it's just my name. It's at Frank Calabrese. Um, I do a lot of politics in Chicago, and you know, I wasn't. Um, I, I work for for the government now, so I, I wasn't mm -hmm. on a side. So the media they used me a lot, kind of for my analysis. So it was a lot of fun. I was on. Uh, you know, I got to be on TV a lot. Uh, nice. This week. Congratulations. Only locally in Chicago, but. Uh, it was a lot. Now of we're bringing now you're national, making you right. national, taking a national. Right. Frank, uh, great to have you. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks, man. Great. Thank great you job. so much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, our Appreciate pleasure. You. Hey, guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.